If you saw the tributes to Stuart Scott yesterday, uh, couldn't help but notice uh, my boy Van Pesey, Scott Van Pelt. And, and, and uh, Scott joins us now. When the camera crew came to interview me for Stuart, it's weird because Stuart's still alive. It's five months ago when they come to the man cave and they go, we're going to ask you questions, past tense, with Stuart. And I'm right there with you. You're still emotional and Stuart's still alive at the time. Uh, you know, I, 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 I wish you could have saw what was said about him yesterday, Scotty. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it was my pleasure. Uh, you know, I enjoy visiting with you guys. If this is my one a year that, that you know, the powers <laughs> that be will sign off on it, I, I hate that we're using it to, uh, you know, to do this. But, I mean, it's appropriate. Um, and I agree with you. It was, it was odd when, um, when they asked, uh, and I, but I understood it. And it was the type of thing where you hope that uh, the Q&A never sees the light of day. But if it's necessary, you want the people that mattered um, to to Stewart and that had uh, a significant impact with him uh, to be heard. And, and obviously that would be you. It would be Rich Eisen. And, and I, I spoke to Rich right after they spoke to him. And I just said, Isn't, what, wasn't it weird? And he said, yeah, I, I kept kind of going back and forth in past tense and present tense. I, yeah. I never thought past tense because I just, I, I couldn't let myself do that. And, and it, when I did, I, I kept correcting myself because I kept being angry at myself. You know, Dan, I'm thinking, you know, he's not gone and, and, and he's going to continue to fight what he did. But, um, you know, to see it in its, in its entirety uh, was just, it was just uh, staggering. And, and you're so right. I, I thought, man, he would have loved to have known. They, they, they had some moments of silence before yeah. playoff games. Yeah. The president is talking about Stewart, and I don't mean this in any way that's that's not positive. As much as anyone, he would have loved to know that yeah. he, that he resonated <laughs> like that. And there, uh, when uh, ESPN came in, and uh, after I I did the show, they said we want to sit down, we want to spend an hour with you, and they started asking you questions. I said, "Does Stewart know about this?" And they said, "No." Um. And here's what I thought. I, I wondered if, and I, I, I don't know, it came into my mind yesterday, and it's a morbid thought, but if you could watch this, your, your eulogy, if, you could, if he could have had the opportunity to hit play and see this before he died, I, I, that's what I thought of. Uh, just that he had all of this there. He didn't want to know about it. They uh, did a courtesy call, I think, to his agent to say, we're going to do this. Um, I don't know. Do you think Stewart would have watched if they said, here it is, hit play? Sure, sure. <laughs> but and, and I, I mean that much more in, uh, if you reach a point, and, and thankfully neither of us have, have, have been there. I've lost um, family members who were close to me, and and. If if there's a moment where you believe that you fought the good fight, but if that fight won't be enough, and you and you know that that your time is around the corner, sure, I think you'd love to to to, to take that embrace, mm. you know, to let people love you. And I'll just say to people that are that are watching and listening to you now, tell me today how much you love me. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me, tell Dan how much you love him. Yeah, because. It's so much better to know it, but you know, before the fact than after. If you, and if you think I am a rotten sob, and I think that's fine too. You, you tell me that, you know, daily and weekly. But I, I do think it's a nice message to everybody. Look, man, you don't have to, you, you don't have to sit on that feeling, that that thought. You know, you can share it. You know, Rich is on Sports Center last night. I mean, we ended this interview with telling each other we love each other on the air. And I mean, you don't. I just think the message is you don't have to be afraid to share. But that you know, happened, what, you, what you feel, Scotty. That happened yesterday with. You know, different people, Mike Tirico, uh, Darius Rucker, uh, mm -hmm. Josh Dumel. I mean, like, I just heard from people who said, I love you, out of nowhere. And it's because I, I think we we looked at part of us died when Stewart died. Because it's a, it's a, it's 20 years of our life, and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, what, what happened? How did it go yeah. so quickly? And I think that's where you say... If I don't get the opportunity to say this, I want to make sure I'm saying it. And, and it really touched me yesterday, just hearing from people because of Stuart, they reacted that way. So I'm not surprised I, Rich, Rich did the same thing with me. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and, I, and I shared that, that, that same sentiment. I can't even remember if it was on the air or not. It was just, it was unbelievable to me from yesterday morning. And it's continuing on even now. 
uh, you, you text back and forth with these people that you know that our lives are, are amazingly lucky lives that you and I lead. It, it, you intersect with these people, you know, the, the actors and athletes and coaches and all the rest, and they're just people the same as any of us. But th- they did the exact same thing, just reaching out to say about Stuart, and then that leads to conversations of just reflection and appreciation. And um, you know, it, it's it's it's. It's a beautiful thing that you come to realize, and, and you were such a huge part of it at ESPN, and you continue to be uh, across all the platforms where you are. What people do is they allow you into their homes, mm-hmm. and they I cannot tell you how many people just that, that I don't know that are kind enough to reach out via Twitter just to say that they lost a friend, a, a friend they never met, but they knew. And that's the, that's the greatest compliment that any of us that do what we do are paid, is that we are... We are a member of their family, and we are welcomed into their homes on a daily basis. And um, and I think it's, it becomes easy in the day-to-day grind. What are we leading with? What are we doing? You know what I mean? That you can get, um, you can you can become numb to the fact uh, that that we get to do what we do, and that we come to mean something to people. And um, and that's an amazing thing. Hey, Scott Van Pelt of the Mothership joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I agree. It's very intimate that you allow me into your car or you allow me into your home, into your bedroom, into your living room, into your man cave, that, that, that's intimate. And it's, that there's a sort of reciprocation. You can reach out via text or you can call the show. So there, I, I felt that when I did SportsCenter. And Stuart did it for 20 years, and I think that's why there's a connection. People feel like they know you, even if they don't. And I also was curious, when you were watching Stuart, before you got there, when you were at the Golf Channel, what were you thinking when you saw Stuart Scott on the air? Well, certainly not that I'd ever, you know, that I'd ever work with him, you know, because he had this, it, it, this, uh, a style that became, um, it was unique. And you talked about it. I, we all talked about it in that piece that, that he, he was unafraid to be that guy because that guy hadn't, hadn't existed. And then he thrived in that role. So, I mean, I don't know if I've ever told you the story. I have, I have a, a, a post it note. That, that sits on my desk in my office that I signed in 90 whatever and then I'm at the golf channel and said I will never work at ESPN and it wasn't a, a I don't want to or I just there was a producer there that said you know what you'll end up up there and I didn't I couldn't in my brain comprehend that I could ever work with him or with Boomer or with you or Eisen or any of those guys it just seemed beyond me and then I got there and I become a peer and then he and I developed this you know uh thing where we were never the way you and and and, and Keith were because it, it, it's not quite the same in terms of the partnerships it would be you know he and I out there and, and you know this because it's it's in, it's inherent in, in what we do to have an ego and I don't mean an arrogance I mean an ego because you have to have an ego to say hey what I'm going to tell you is worth listening to and I'm going to present it in a way that, that, that is uh, is mine and he had that and when you sat next to him out there and we'd look at each other and we'd just smile. Cause, and you said it in the, in the piece, it's that eight-mile bit. It's like, hey, you better make sure that your rhyme counts, because when I get the mic, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going for mine. And again, it's not about I'm trying to win, but neither one of you wants to be the, 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 the second guy, right? Whether it was you and Keith or you and Stuart or any of us, you want to make sure that you don't get dusted out there. Yeah. And so when, when it would be me and Stuart and things got going, I'd think, man, we're, we're having fun, but, you know, I'm not playing for second tonight. You know, I'm, I'm walking up, I'm going to get in the first star, whoever, whoever gives that out in Bristol at 2 a.m. Yeah, there was, uh, I, I tell people how competitive it was. And it was competitive in, in, you know, sometimes in a friendly and a good way. Stuart and myself, it was, it was competitive. It was on. Like we were, oh, sure. we were co-hosting Sports Center, but he was doing his, and then it was my turn. That's why I, I likened it to, uh, you know, the wrap off with with Eight Mile with Eminem, where you're just going, all right, you know, Stuart just dropped the mic. Hold on, now it's my turn, and you know he kind of thrived on that, and so did I. I, I yeah, and that's and that's I I tried to sort of sum that up last night, and that we we joked about the idea of, of the Gary Payton Sean Kemp because when it is when it's competitive. But it's not it's not um, competitive to the point that I'm trying to make the other guy look bad because at the, at the end of it it's a sh- we're on the same team here mm-hmm. you know if, if I'm Gary Payton and I just throw it up and you go alley oop it well great because it should be collaborative um, I just want to get introduced last you know what I, mean? <laughs> I just want to be the, I want to be the guy that walks out last when everybody else is in the huddle. <laughs> hey, uh, great to visit with you and uh, appreciated the comments that you had. I'll uh, I'll see you in Arizona. 
Uh, I look forward to it. Uh, thanks for letting me do this, Dan. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. It's uh, Scott Van Pelt.